Good day, mates. This is Arithmetic Lesson 52. We're still in Australia. I've brought my boomerang. Careful, I might just throw it at you. You know, the Bible says there's a law of sowing and reaping that you you get what you give out. And so if you give out good things, that means eventually the good things will come back to you. If you give out bad things, then eventually the bad things will come back to you. Uh, there is a, the law of the boomerang is that when you throw the boomerang, if you throw it correctly, it'll go all the way in a circle and then come back to you. That is if it doesn't hit something on the way. So that's what's special about the boomerang that was invented by the Aborigines. Hey, they're a pretty smart group of people there. Now, today, we're going to talk about when we subtract two-digit numbers. We've already learned when you add them, you must always add what? The ones column first. Remember we said, say it with me, ready? Ones on the right, tens on the left. Again, ones on the right, tens on the left. So on your paper, you can see that they have written ones up here and tens here. But by now, you need to be getting used to the idea that the ones will always be on the right. So if we were adding, we would be adding the ones place first, but we're not adding, we're subtracting, but that's okay. Guess what? It works the same way. So just be sure that you are subtracting the ones column first. So we can, instead of saying you must always add the ones column first, we're gonna say you must subtract the ones column first. So always do, the ones column first, whether it's addition or subtract, subtraction. Say that with me, always do, ready? Always do the ones column first, and that way it will apply to either one. Always do the ones column first. So this is gonna be easy. Zero minus zero is zero, right? Five minus one is four. Now these are not on your paper. Just look up here, we're just doing a little bit of an introduction. And uh, let's go to this one. Four minus two is two. Notice we're doing the ones column first. This one, oh, there's nothing there. That's okay, you just treat it like a zero. So one, take away nothing, you'd still have one, right? Or, oh, did you see what I forgot? Aha, very observant, you're right. I was wondering if you would notice. Yeah, I didn't do that well, but also, I didn't put my cent sign there. If we're working with money, we should put our signs. Oh, a sign, that's one of your spelling words this week. Do you remember how to spell it? S I. G-N, that's right, because the G is silent. All right, here we go. My marker's not working very well, so I don't know if you're even seeing what I'm doing here. I hope so. Let's do one more. Five minus four is one, and three minus two is one. Now you might say, well, if we did the tens column first, we'd end up with the same answer with all of these, but remember, there's a reason, an important reason why that we have to get in the habit and stay in the habit of always doing the ones column first. It'll make things much easier later. So obey that rule and you'll be very glad that you did. Let's do the ones on your paper now. So have your paper in front of you and I'm going to write them here as we do them. The first one is 71 minus 30. I'm not gonna do all of them with you but I'm just gonna get you started. All right, 71 minus 30. So we're gonna do the ones column first. One minus zero is, that's right, one. And seven minus three is four. So your answer is 41. Will you do the rest of those for me and then send the picture in and I'll see if you got the hang of it. And in section two, it says the longest recorded boomerang throw is 1,401 feet. Write the place values for these numbers. So you should know how to do that. Just follow along. I wanna see how you do that. I'm not gonna talk about it today. All right, number three. We are going to practice counting quarters because that is new. So let me get my quarters. Before you count your coins, 
let's remember the difference between a quarter and a nickel so you don't get them confused. Remember, a quarter has George Washington and he has his shirt in the wash. He has no collar. And Thomas Jefferson has a nice big collar. He's got his shirt. And if they show you the back side of a nickel, remember it's Thomas Jefferson's house, Monticello, and you'll also know it right away because it says five cents. So that's our nickel with Thomas Jefferson. Remember, he was the one that liked to plan buildings. Now, our quarters are counted by 25s. Hopefully you're really good at doing your nickels by fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You're going back and forth between zero and five or five and zero, back and forth, back and forth. All right, when we're counting quarters, then we're counting by 25s. So we need to memorize that. Let's try it together as a warm up. 25, 50, 75, $1, $1, 25, $1, 50, $1.75, $2. And notice how the pattern repeats. You've got 25 and then $1.25 here. So 50, $1.50, 75, $1.75. And then you go from $1 to $2. So every time you get four more quarters, then you've got a whole nother dollar because each quarter is one fourth of a dollar. So two quarters is halfway to a dollar. Three quarters is three fourths of the way to a dollar and four quarters is one whole dollar. So every time you have four quarters, you have the same amount as one whole dollar bill. Now, notice my quarters look very different and you're gonna be seeing quarters that look different. Sometimes the back is different. They don't always have an eagle. There are different states quarters, uh, national park quarters, a lot of different things on the back. But the front side will always show George Washington without a collar. So that will help you. And of course, this one is our Florida quarter and that one too. So let's do our 25s one more time. 25, 50, 75, $1, $1, 25, $1, 50, $1, 75, $2. What if we were gonna go to $3, what would it be? $2, 25, $2, 50, $2, $75, $3. Could you count $4 to $5? All right, I don't have time to do that here. We're gonna be mixing up the coins on your paper and you can't cut them out and unmix them, so you're gonna check them off. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you do that on your own and see how you do. And you're going to do your thermometers. You're gonna color them. Use your pencil, not your crayon. Crayon just makes it more difficult for you. And remember, Mark where you're gonna stop, and then, I don't have my other pencils missing, but I've got to, don't you, well, if you did use a colored pencil, as long as it's a pretty sharp one, that would be better than using a crayon. All right, so if you use your pencil, find out where you're gonna stop. On the first one, you're gonna stop at 56. So find that mark and mark it with your point, and then start at the bottom and color in using the side. See how I'm holding my pencil? To use the side of my pencil and color it in. It doesn't need to be colored really, really darkly. And then make sure it's even all the way across the top. If it's not, then use your little, not your pink pearl eraser, but your pencil eraser because it's smaller. Use that to kind of even it up along the edge because it has to be exact. It's not easy to do, is it? So work on that. Now, I'm going to erase my board and do a little bit of something with fractions to help prepare you for your seat work. Goodbye. How are the billy lids to die? I've got my eye on you. Well, hello there. You must be cranky crock today. All right, I have some questions for you. We've been learning about which is more pizza? A half a pizza or one fourth of a pizza? What do you think, Cranky Croc? Well, four is bigger than two, so I'd say one fourth is bigger than one half. Wrong! Students, you knew, didn't you? In a fraction, the bottom number means we have cut it in more pieces if it's bigger. So a pizza cut into fourths has four pieces. It's gonna make the pieces all smaller. Yeah, that's right, you following me? All smaller 
than if we only cut it into two pieces. Oh, I think I've got it. All right, so we're gonna, uh, let me ask you another question then. If you have pizzas, would you rather eat half of a pizza or three fourths of a pizza? Well now, I remember what you just told me that if there's a four on the bottom, it means this piece is or it's less. So I'd rather eat one half than three fourths. Hooray! Wrong! Now you've got me totally confused. Yes, I got him totally confused now. I probably have you totally confused too. So fractions can be tricky. So let's talk about it with what's behind me. All right. Okay, you listen well, greater gator. <laughs> All right, here we go. We have, we're going to talk about which circle, which is more that is shaded in. There's my marker. All right, so let's look at these two circles first. We definitely have one half here, don't we? And we have one fourth here. And so which is the most? which has more shaded in. This one does. So one half is greater than one fourth. And we cannot tell by the bottom numbers because four is bigger than two, but we've cut it into four pieces, which means one of those four pieces is gonna be smaller than one of the two pieces. So we do have to pay attention to both the top and the bottom number, which we're gonna find out in a minute. All right, we can't just go by the bottom number all the time. All right, let's look at the squares. This one is divided in what? Yes, one half. And this one is divided into four parts and only one fourth, one of the four parts is shaded in. So one half again is greater than one fourth. Got it? Now let's look at the circles down here. This one was cut into four pieces, one, two, three, four. You can't really see the dividing lines anymore. I'll try to draw them back for you. And so three of the four pieces are colored in. I'm gonna put a three on top and a four on the bottom. That is the fraction three fourths because three of the four pieces are colored in. On this one, it's only been cut into half. Of course, you know, if we cut it into fourths, we could say it's two fourths. Two fourths, one half is the same thing. So one half. Now, we have a four on the bottom here and a two on the bottom there. We did cut this into more pieces. Does that necessarily mean that this piece is bigger? No, no because we're talking about three of the four pieces here. And if we shade in three of the four pieces in this circle, we are shading in more than if we're only coloring in or shading in half of the circle here. So you have to consider both the top and the bottom, not just the bottom. So three fourths is greater than one half. So I hope that helps explain it a little bit. On your arithmetic paper, on the seat work side, you're going to be picking which fraction you think works with the picture. You're not gonna be doing exactly like what I did up here. And maybe if you show your parents what fairy bread is, maybe they'll make you some fairy bread. So be sure to read about the fairy bread on the seat work side. It also has in the pieces of bread, you're counting by threes. So let's try our song together just to remind you. It goes to the tune of Jingle Bells. Ready? Sing it with me. Three, six, nine, tw oh, you say you need it. Okay, I will give you the, the numbers. Hold on. Well, that was fast. Sometimes I just feel like Mary Poppins. Here we go. Ready? Three, six, nine. No, I guess not. I messed up. I left out my 12, didn't I? Let me fix that in a flash. There we go. Ready? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and 27 isn't counting fun. 
three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, and twenty seven, thirty, and we're done almost. Now we're just going to say them because when we learn the three multiplication table, we will be going to thirty six. Ready? Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one. 24, 27, 30, 33, 36. There, if you need help with that on when you get to your seat work paper, uh, come back and play this because I know some of you don't have that memorized yet. And you're going to do some more coins and a story problem on your seat work paper. Have a good day. Have a bonzer day. Ha 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 ha. I'm going to get you.